Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. Hi there. I'm enjoying my uh, Tim Hortons coffee. Thank you to my patrons who have uh, all chipped in to help me produce my videos and be able to uh, buy the occasional coffee without having to make it at home. Um, I'm going to start a new project today and I'm going to do it on my rigid huddle loom. I've been wanting to try some variable shrinkage uh, projects. So what that basically means is parts of the uh, pe woven piece will shrink up in the wet finishing and parts won't. So I'm going to do some sampling on my rigid heddle loom in a couple of different kinds of uh, yarns to uh, see how they behave. And I think I'm going to do uh, acrylic and wool because wool definitely will shrink and acrylic definitely won't. And So this is my wool shells and I've been working through it uh, pretty quickly. I'm leaning towards this um, because this is this has been dyed already so this is a lace weight uh, wool but I dyed it already in a solid color or semi-solid but that's what I would do if I was to go into production I would dye the wool um, in interesting colors and then use it so that's uh, I don't want to use a wool that's still fresh off the cone because it'll shrink differently than a wool that's already gone through some hot water in the dyeing process. And if I don't have enough of this color, I have um, this other color here, which is the same, the same wool, which has been dyed in a different blue. So I can use, let me take both of them over to the acrylic. And my acrylics are on this shelf. So I think I'm gonna go with this tan color. I want it to be different from the blue, both in color and in value. So so here's my warping setup right now. I have my loom clamped to this desk. Don't look at the inside, just a clutter. But uh, the clamp is over the edge of the desk. I have my yarn on the floor, both the acrylic and the wool. And I'm pulling it to the reed. And down there I have a, another little table and the clamp that I use to, to wrap it around. Now this is all um, not tight. It's fairly loose, just hanging there, which works well for me. And I'm alternating 10 acrylic and 25 wool all the way across and honestly I'm not sure if that's the right uh, ratio whether I should be doing equal width stripes or or more acrylic and less wool um, I think the pattern that's in my head shows um, the the non-shrinking ends being wider than the shrinking ends the problem with that is I am set up to dye wool. I'm not set up to dye acrylic. So I will have all the interesting colors in the wool. And if those are the narrower stripes, it may not be as interesting a scarf if the majority of the ends are acrylic, which is just one color. So. That's, this is the way I'm going to do it now. It's just, um, it's short. I didn't even measure it. So what is this? Um, it's not even three yards. It's maybe two yards tops. Um, and I'll just be sampling down the length of it. So if this doesn't work, if these acrylic stripes are too narrow and the wool one's too wide, I will warp it up again. Uh, with either even or a uh, wider acrylic and narrower wool stripes. I have the full width of the reed wound off and I just measured it. It is 76 inches long. Shameless plug. My 
paintings and my weaving, which is all for sale. Check out the listings in my shop. Link is in the description below. So I'm all tied on. And I'm going to put, uh, weave in some header here to spread the warp. It's looking good on the back beam. Nice and even. And yeah, I, I added uh, a different color in here. I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough of the turquoise color, so I put a stripe of blue in, which is kind of interesting, actually. And uh, this is a sample, so uh, the exact colors are not important. So this is the acrylic, and the blues are the wool. And um, in thinking about it overnight, I'm not sure if I did this quite the way I wanted to. I think I wanted the wool on the outside edges to shrink up so that the buckling parts happened on the inside of the piece. So right now, the way I anticipate it going is that the wool parts will shrink and full the acrylic won't so it will the acrylic will be buckling and so that means I'll have ruffled edges and ruffled parts in the middle I kind of wanted the reverse of that but again this is a sample and I think I'll do another sample after this with the proportions a little different and maybe wool on the edges and compare that as well I'm hem stitching the beginning and end I'm doing it uh, in very small bunches to make a, a nice neat edge and so I'm hem stitching in groups of four and I'm going four stitches up. I'm going to weave a number of samples with each sample having a different weft and or a different weft color order. So this is the first one, and I'm weaving it with the 100% wool, the same wool that's used in the warp. So I'm on the second sample now, and this is, the weft is the acrylic, which is the same acrylic that's in the uh, warp. And... I'm going to weave about 12 inches of that. I wove 12 inches of the turquoise wool weft. And now I'm going to weave 12 inches of the acrylic weft. And we're going to see what happens in the wet finishing, how, uh, how the two different uh, pieces of cloth turn out. One will shrink and tighten up more than the other and I just want to see what effects I get from that so I'll know uh, how to set up the next warp to get the effects that I want. After I finish uh, weaving this in acrylic I will do a third sample and I'm going to do a band of acrylic and a band of wool and use that also in the comparison. So here's the piece on the loom and close-up of the weave, just a plain weave. So I finished uh, alternating wool and acrylic. So I have these panes of wool that will shrink up. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it will look uh, once I do some vigorous wet finishing. Now I'm just uh, hem stitching this edge and I still have a fair amount of warp left. I think maybe I will use some other wool uh, that I have in my stash and see how other wool um, shrinks up. I also have some wool alpaca that might be a good test to see how it shrinks up um, when used as weft.
So here are the four pieces off the loom and they are uh, just fresh off the loom so they haven't been washed yet. So they all look even and straight and flat which is to be expected. This one has a 100% wool weft. This one is the 100% acrylic weft. This one is alternating between the lighter acrylic and the blue wool down its length. Uh, it, I had a warp thread break, so that's just the repair piece there. That'll be snipped after wet finishing. And this had a variety of wefts, um, wool, orlon, a wool alpaca blend, something unknown. I don't know what this um, orangey brown, reddish brown yarn is. I, I suspect it's wool. And the final one is, oh, an acrylic. So uh, next they get measured uh, pre-wash and then I will give them some vigorous uh, finishing and we'll see what shrinks up and what doesn't and what we get. So I, I soaked these in hot water uh, with a little bit of uh, woolite. So a little dab of this. Fulling requires uh, soap and uh, heat and agitation. So I, I soaked for about 20 minutes and then now I've been beating on this. So the way I do it, I just grab all the different pieces and just keep tossing them. They uh, are still wet and they're still, uh, they're still soap in it, but uh, they're getting cooler but that doesn't matter. So I'm just uh, basically throwing them against the bottom of the sink over and over again. And we can see that things are happening. We can see that uh, there's definitely fulling going on in the wool parts, but not in the acrylic parts, which is just what we want to see. And I probably would stop about here if I was, uh, doing an all wool piece, but I really want to push it and see how much I can get the stuff to shrink up. So a few more tosses, then I'll rinse them out and uh, let them dry. I don't think I'll put them through the, through the dryer. I think I'll just lay them flat to dry. Okay, the samples are dry and some really cool things happened. Uh, lots of um, rippling, which is exactly what I want. Let's look at these one at a time. So this is the uh, the first one. So the again the neutral color is the acrylic, and the blue uh, stripes are the warp. And the weft on this one is 100% wool, which is the same as the warp. And it shrunk up beautifully. I love what's happened here. Now the uh, the edges have the, the flaring happening. If I was to do this again, I would probably have the wool on the selvage edges and just have the acrylic on the inside stripes because uh, that would give the effect that I want. I'm not as crazy about the, the sides flaring, but that's a good thing to know from this sample. And uh, yeah, this is, what I was hoping would happen. And so along the full length of the piece, I think um, we'll have some interesting uh, things happening. I think the acrylic could also be, um, the stripes could be a little wider uh, to make it more obvious. I had the wool stripes wider because the wool is what I would be dyeing um, in multiple colors. The next one I did was uh, the acrylic weft and what happened here is the uh, warp did shrink up so we still have a little bit of this ruffling happening because the wool warp uh, did shrink and pull things in so that worked as well I don't think there's as much um, 
pull in as as in this one, uh, which is understandable. You can see the the width is is different too. So this stayed bigger, I guess. I like the feel of this. This is lighter. This is a little heavier, and it just seems. The, the acrylic is a, is a little bit bigger grist, I guess, and so it, um, yeah, it feel, you can feel it. So we also get the rippling effect with the acrylic weft, just not quite as much as here, I think. The next piece is where I alternated the acrylic and the wool in the weft. And this is cool. This, this gave a pucker in both directions. Um, makes this part bulge up. I don't know, I love this. I love the look of it and also the, the feel of it. Um, I don't know if it looks like, an, like a rumpled, un, unironed piece of cloth or, or a mistake. Um, you know, I did it on purpose, but I don't know if it would come across as um, this is the way it is on purpose. But I think, you know, wrapped around your neck, I think it would, as a scarf, it would look gorgeous. Especially when you start playing with the dye colors in there. So I think that's an option too. And then because I had some warp uh, left over, I just used various wefts. Um, some of which I knew what they were and some of them I didn't. So uh, this is wool and it pulled in the most and there's some neat tracking in there too. So this uh, turned out very similar to to here. This is Orlon and uh, of course it did not uh, shrink in the in the weft. It should probably put it this way. Warp weft. Orlon weft. So this, there's some bulging there, which is cool. This is the um, alpaca and wool uh, combination. This is an unknown fiber, which I thought was wool. It seems to not have this reddish brown one. It seems to not have pulled in as much as this one. So I'm wondering if it is not 100% wool. It almost seems to be just as wide as as the Orlon, or maybe slightly less. I wonder if it's a wool blend, or if it's just acrylic. I really don't know. And then this is acrylic up here. And it's soft and beautiful. And uh, it is giving me some of that differential uh, shrinkage. So there's lots to be learned from examining these pieces. I plan on doing a few more experiments with differential shrinkage. So if you'd like to see those, subscribe to my channel, like, hit the bell icon for notifications. If you'd like to support me as I create these videos, please check out my Patreon. All links are in the description below. Thank you for watching.